right, well, there's a massive migration of animals capturing attention of people across the globe, but these aren't your just typical species. Yes, from the Congo Basin to Norway, a herd of puppets is rising, raising awareness about climate change. And the idea is that a group of animals start fleeing because of climate change. Um, and as they go from city to city along the journey, they will add more native species, more endemic species, and the herd grows and grows and grows. Um, the journey starts in Congo Basin and will end in the north of Norway, so it's a 20,000 kilometer journey and we're creating partnerships in cities along the route. Obviously, Little Amal has been a massive learning curve. We took a lot of lessons, we did a lot of mistakes, uh, we hope we'll do different mistakes, not the same mistakes. Um, we, we learned a lot. I think the main, main lesson is local knowledge, local knowledge, local knowledge, local knowledge is planted in real partnerships in local cities with local citizen groups, with local civic society is what gives this the engine, the honesty, the, it, what propels it. And it is to create an emotional reaction. That's at the core of this. We're theater people. We want to tell a story that evokes an emotional reaction. And we believe that if you do that, you will also create action. Yeah, and the wow factor. Like, whoa, look at those they're things. Are there beautiful. people inside there? Yeah, they're beautiful. And of course, the puppets are made of easily accessible recycled materials such as cardboard and plywood. Mm -hmm. Welcome back into Pattern, your home for the latest news in climate change and sustainability. I'm Steph Abrams. And I'm Jordan Steele. We're going to heat things up with today's hot topics. And they say, drivers, start your engines. <laughs> Although this is just going to be like, no, no audio whatsoever. They need whatsoever. the sound effects. Right, because these cars are going to be electric. NASCAR just unveiled its first prototype of an electric race car. Don't worry, this thing's got plenty of horsepower. In fact, more horsepower. Three electric motors are in the car, and it's going to help crank out a maximum of over 1,300 horsepower, Woo. which is nearly double what current stock cars are putting out. Oh, my gosh. Out. Yeah, it's not cheap. It comes with a $1.5 million price tag. NASCAR doesn't have any current plans to taking race uh, electric completely, but it does say that it's looking for feedback from fans on the car itself. NASCAR has plans to meet net zero operating emissions by the year 2035. I think it's just a matter of time. I mean, Formula One's already, already sure. doing it, you know. This reminds me, okay, so first off, let's think about the horsepower for a second. It has almost <laughs> double the horsepower. Can you imagine okay? when you hit tap that acceleration? We've been in an electric car. Ooh. You go back. Oh, right, so yeah. have, do you remember as a kid you had those little electric car racetracks and you had the little finger and it was zzz, 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 yes, you yes, know and every yes. once in a while you'd go around and the it corner would and it'd fly off yeah which makes me think about like you got to be careful fast, around those corners right, how fast you can really with go that speed and and then the question is do they add the sound back in yeah i don't know to it'd give be kind it of, more well, can you imagine if it's, it's like silent racing but i was going to say it'd be kind of nice <laughs> everyone was just was was and quiet, instead of like, you do the golf clap for it instead. <laughs> we completely All different right. Event. Well, foul <laughs> on the play, and we are talking F O W L. Costco is switching up packaging to its popular rotisserie chickens, and customers are not having it. What's instead wrong with that? of hard plastic containers, now the chickens are being served up in flexible plastic bags. Right, those bags we just saw. Yeah. Costco says the switch would save 17 million pounds of plastic a year, Great. plus takes up less space, Wonderful. meaning fewer carbon emitting trucks on the road. The problem, shoppers say, is the new bags leak and leave oh, your geez. trunk smelling like chicken. Honestly, it's probably better smelling than a lot of your trunks out there right now. Let's be honest, okay? <laughs> chicken would be great. Especially if kids and they put yes, all of their like, oh, so sweaty gear now. and everything in there. They already, you know, do those chicken packaging in like other grocery stores. stores. Yeah. It's no big deal. I know. I think maybe one of the differences is because you don't have, one of our um, producers brought this up in our meeting, you okay. don't have like bags that you're, a lot of times you just are putting your right. items in your trunk. Okay. So maybe it's tipping over that oh, way. You know, I don't know. I don't. Reality, no, no. Here's reality. No one likes change. Everything, something changes. Everyone's like, oh my gosh. So this has been all over social media. 
And you know how I love to scroll the yes, TikTok? Yes, of course. One of the other problems that someone was saying is that they actually reused those harder plastic containers. That, oh, that, they did. Like, I would buy the it at home. The person did. Right, like when I get takeout right. food, I yes. rinse out the plastic right. container and, like, reuse it. And Which so someone was like, well, I need the plastic containers because I okay. use them or okay. whatever. But this is overall reducing plastic, yeah, which we I, don't listen, need. Listen, I'm on board with it's you crazy. about it. I'm on board with you about it. Or maybe they can just tweak it a little to make it more... <laughs> A flatter bottom or something so it doesn't tilt over. Maybe they could just That's tweak weird. it. All right, uh, as we move on to our hot topic number three here, works of art. They know we know they're inspiring, right? You can smile at it, you can contemplate what does it mean, maybe even you know clear the air here. But this piece in Detroit is doing all of that and some. The huge sculpture is of an, of an uh, African crown called New Forest Ancient Thrones, and it's by the artist and activist Jordan Weber. Perhaps the best part, instead of jewels, the crown is topped with a functioning air monitoring system that lets residents in the surrounding communities track pollutants from wildfire smoke oh, to heavy emissions. That is really cool. Most of the time now you've got to really like log online to see what the air quality is. But if you could just have a light that tells you. And you can't even, I'm looking at this and you can't even tell that there's something else going on besides artwork. So that kind of begs the question, should all artwork that's outside like this and these huge sculptures, right, should they function than more just something beautiful to look at? A lot of the times, I don't know, I'm like, what is, I don't know. You can't even figure you know, it out, I, like, but, but what the sculpture what's is. What's cool about that idea is if you go to research it or look, or sometimes they have like a little thing that you can read about it, yeah. there's so much history, and, and then you're like, oh, I had no idea that's what that means. Yeah. And this is doing that, plus it's obviously, letting people know what the air quality is. I love when you, Barcelona does it great with artwork just all over the city, everywhere yeah. you turn. And it just adds more color and charm right. to the city. So I think it is important to have the artwork, but I still think having it functional. Would be great. Really That'd be great. Yeah, makes it even better. Mm -hmm.